cut the cord, doing business without being tied down. So we've got uh, three fantastic uh, guests with us here today. We've got Kevin Flores, who is our support engineer. We've got Ben Moser, our director of marketing. And we've got Sam Miller, yeah, public sector uh, ramps southeast. So thank you guys all for, for hopping on here today. Thank you for having us, Mark. Absolutely. The state of the modern office. Ben, do you want to um, tee us off here? Absolutely. Thanks for uh, setting us up today, Mark. Uh, again, my name is Ben Moser. I'm the director of marketing here at RCN. And uh, today, I think we're really excited to dig into how the modern office looks. And that's the first thing I really wanted to share with everybody was, you know, going forward, what is what does today's office look like? You know, 2021, 2022 and, and the next couple of years. Uh, a lot of it is pandemic related, right? Pandemic disruptions aren't new, uh, even if we're kind of COVID tired uh, from or COVID over overwhelmed. Uh, it's, it's still a part of a lot of businesses. A lot of businesses have changed. And we'll dig into that a little bit. Um, you know, hybrid work going forward. Not all of the hybrid work is pandemic related. Uh, we'll go through a couple of real world scenarios as well, talking about uh, some uh, fun fake uh, organizations that we've kind of got a little bit of uh, common challenges built into each one to share a story about each and how they, they uh, can handle that really easily uh, going forward and really dealing with uh, some of the doing business without being tied down, uh, cutting the cord and solutions and, and solving problems with that. So without uh, spending any more time on it, let's jump in. So obviously the elephant in the room is uh, COVID, right? COVID's changed business, whether it's uh, been the way you take orders, uh, how much business you've done, whether it's up or down, um, the operational side of business. Uh, and it's related to a lot of things you see on the screen, right? Distancing has really challenged both employee in office, whether you have customers in or not, whether you're an open business or you're pretty uh, well closed off to your customers. Uh, it's changed the way that you, you lay out your floors, right? You know, here at RCN, we had for a long time where we had to actually space out our desks differently than we did before. And it's not new. It's different. You know, tables at restaurants are are, are challenging now. You got a half capacity just because of space. Uh, so you have challenges related to, to, to distance uh, from the pandemic. You got sickness, right? Sickness doesn't just impact those who actually get sick, right? You got employees that are in and out of the office now. Uh, whether they got COVID or not, because they were exposed, or they might've been exposed, they're quarantining, they're doing the right thing, but, uh, and that's not going anytime soon, you know, small gatherings, small spaces, it's basically impossible in small spaces to not have some sort of uh, risk there uh, nowadays, or at least the, the impression of risk, which is part of the challenge for businesses as well. So, you know, with all these things here, uh, you know, we're really trying to figure out how is that, uh, how is business gonna go for it, right? Not all businesses are gonna be permanently changed. Some are temporary, but a lot of those temporary changes seen really changed the long term, right? Businesses have decided to continue doing business differently, uh, even without COVID as, as a big influence, uh, you know, going into 2022, maybe. Uh, examples of that, right? Um, uh, Discovery, right? They have a huge facility here in uh, Knoxville, Tennessee. Uh, two major buildings on a big campus and they've been remote since i guess march of last year and they have no plans of sending any of their employees in mass back to the office for right now uh you know i had lunch with a, with a friend whose wife has been there and she's still working from home and has no plan to go back into the office right that's a huge business uh discovery channel discovery networks uh and so that's something that they they've permanently changed their business model at least for the foreseeable future on remote work and they could go back into the office, but it probably won't be the same, right? Another example, uh, Middle Tennessee, uh, Murfreesboro, State Farm has a huge facility, uh, State Farm Insurance, right? You know, Jake from State Farm, it, he doesn't work in that office anymore, right? He, he did before. They've actually closed the building. They're permanently not using this massive, massive space in Murfreesboro. Uh, and, and that's just part of their new normal, their new business model. I hate the term new normal, but it's real for a lot of businesses. Uh, so whether you're adapting temporarily, you're adapting permanently, business is now different and you have to be able to uh, find a solution that supports that new model. So we're here to help solve some of those challenges related to that, right? The pandemic has made business different, but it's not all about the pandemic either, right? So with a lot of businesses, field work has been part of the business for a long time. Uh, and you'll see on the right the, that uh, many problems 
with field work come from the technology and new needs over the last 10 years. You send a field tech out into the field and they need to be able to connect to the internet, not only to be able to communicate with their headquarters, uh, should they need to, to ask a question, maybe it's a change order from what they thought they were gonna have to do, but simply to pull up the job. You know, the, uh, the tech needs to pull up uh, what's going on with this specific, uh, whether they're customer facing or they're working on equipment, company on equipment in the field, uh, they need to be able to pull up the job order. What's going on with it? What's going on with the work they need to do that time? Uh, maybe they need to do a quick research to solve a problem. Um, they need to be able to find a, a quick solution in a company database uh, to be able to solve the customer's issue or, or to be able to work on whatever that is that they're working on. And that's not new. That's not pandemic related. So we've seen both end, right? There's pandemic disruptions that are temporary. There's pandemic disruptions that are going to be more permanent. And there's field needs and, and connectivity needs in the field that are not related to pandemic at all. And so doing business without being tied down isn't just a COVID thing, but it is something that we need to be able to find solutions for, for these customers so they can work more productively, work more efficiently. And we can help with that. We know how to help solve some of these problems. So what do those problems look like, right? Uh, on the left, you'll see the, you know, the office workers, right? Whether it's a small business or an enterprise business like Discovery, you know, you send somebody home, uh, whether you're, you got five people, now you went from one location where you're monitoring the network, you're monitoring connectivity, you're monitoring security, you're making sure that your IT team, whether they're in or out, can support your employees and keep your business up. Uh, now you've gone to five locations. You've 500 percent of your, your complicated network, right? Uh, and that's just a small business of five people. Your, your discovery with 3,000 people across the country, now you went from, you know, a handful of headquarters across the country or main offices to 3,000 offices. How do you manage that? What do you do? Um, you know, you need, you need a solution that can help solve some of those problems that weren't problems when you had somebody or had a group of people in a single location. So, so that's part of it. And then and we talked a little, bit about the field, a little bit about the field workers already, but, you know, that remote connectivity, that communication. And one of the things we, we really didn't touch on yet, and we're not going to dig into today a lot, but the IoT sensors and notifications and connectivity there to be able to monitor the success of a specific uh, maybe piece of equipment, uh, you know, the levels or the temperature or the volume or whatever that piece is uh, that is valuable to knowing the information on a consistent and routine basis. So. Um, those are problems that we've seen uh, with existing businesses that now have a hybrid model, regardless of what caused it. Um, Mark, is there anything I'm, I'm missing uh, that you feel like is valuable for our audience to to know about regarding the changes and the new needs? Yeah. Um, so really, the only thing I thought of uh, while you were talking was that um, there are actually several um, very large like Google level companies that are uh, trying to recoup some losses that they made during the pandemic by continuing to work remotely. Right. So they don't have that um, that real estate cost or, you know, having to pay for the office or the utilities. Uh, they're saving money in that way. And uh, as long as they have the correct um, networking solutions for their for their people, um, you know, they're going to be doing a great job of, of kind of recouping those losses. Yeah. And, and that's something that, you know, isn't necessarily always factored in either. You know, you change that business model from, an, uh, you know, all your employees or most of your employees in one spot. And now they're all in different spots or, you know, maybe it's even hybrid. Some are in, some are out. And you know, maybe your real estate your leasing costs go down, your operational expenses in the building and maintenance and cleaning and all that goes down because you're not needing it as much. Uh, but you haven't invested in the alternative solution to be able to protect yourselves. There's a lot of risk involved with doing that, uh, both from downtime and productivity issues to security and management issues. So we'll dig into all that in a little bit as well. But, um, you know, you, you really, there are a lot of challenges related to this new model. That's really the, the whole point of what we're talking about so far and kind of establishing that modern office, the state of the modern office, that's what's going on. That's the challenges and the state of connectivity and, and the needs uh, of different businesses from you know small businesses to enterprise businesses, field-based businesses like construction, oil and gas, emergency, you know, being able to connect on day one for construction. So um, there's a lot of challenges related to the new normal of business, whether it was pandemic related or not. So let's dig into a couple of 
story-based examples, right? Uh, and, and if you uh, are a fan of the TV show community, you will you can thank Mark, our, uh, our moderator, for the left example, Greendale Community College. Uh, and then the right, you see Pump It Up Oil Company. So we're going to dig into two fictional companies here and talk about some of the struggles that they've had as an example uh, and, and how they solved them. So Greendale is a community college. It's got uh, a flex setup, right? It's got students and, and teachers going in and out two to three days a week in person and out uh, remote uh, with, you know, let's say 2,000 students, uh, maybe 300 teachers or professors that are they're working uh, in and around the organization on the campus. And so they need uh, a, a solution to a lot of their challenges, right? Uh, and that, that's a lot, you know, of a pandemic related challenge that, that's new. Uh, you got Pump It Up Oil Company on the right. Uh, they're an independently owned you know, oil and gas operation. They got about 50 uh, employees and field techs. Uh, that's not really been disrupted a whole lot by pandemic specific, you know, economy might go up and down affecting their supply and demand, but it's not pandemic disruption. So let's dig in. What's their story? Greendale, they've got some issues with connectivity, making sure their students can access the information, the classes while they're remote, right? Teaching remote is a challenge uh, and being able to connect. If the teacher's feed goes out, well, then you got 20 to 100, depending on how big the class is, uh, students that are just twiddling their thumbs, right? So that's a problem. Uh, and not being able to manage the, the connectivity, right? So uh, if you've got a bunch of people that are, uh, you know, logged in on their, their apartment internet, for example, um, if that internet goes out, then you've got students that are no, no longer connected and the teacher can't stop class or the professor can't stop teaching to help make sure those students get back online. How's the IT team support that? So you got poor connectivity issues, you got security issues there uh, from the network perspective, and there's no way to manage or monitor that. And teachers can't really rely on making sure their students are able to do work outside of seeing them on the Zoom, making sure they're connected. And that doesn't have to be limited to a community college either, right? That could be a K-12 school with the same exact setup, doing that virtual hybrid model where some are in or some are out, and you're still having those same connectivity challenges uh, related to education. The main thing that they want to avoid isn't really trying to band-aid the temporary connectivity issues or managing a student in and out issue. It's wanting to make sure those students get a good education, right? We're hearing stories about students being held back for a year because of the pandemic. They didn't skip school for a year, but they might have had challenges connecting at home, getting homework done, being able to do research outside of class. And there's not an easy solution that, that they've been able to, to help band-aid that or help solve that, that big picture problem. So how do we fix that? How do we help that organization with that? And the right side, you see the uh, Pump It Up Oil Company, their problems, right? They're really related to connectivity in the field. It's not the hybrid model. You don't have people going in and out, but they do have people moving around a lot where the Greendale example was a pretty fixed footprint, right? They have a campus, right? They have some maybe student housing, some education buildings. And for the most part, that, that footprint's pretty well fixed. And Pump It Up Oil, they have, let's say 100, 200 location sites across uh, a region where they're uh, monitoring, they're, they're working, they've got equipment set up and they're having to send out you know, their field techs uh, uh, you know, every week. That connectivity is moving around. They, they have a different footprint maybe every day or every week that they're actually needing connection to. Um, and so they need to be able to rely on that connection when they when they need it, where they need it, at the time that they need it. Uh, and so one of the challenges that, that they might face or might think about is how do we get those sites connected? Well, it doesn't make sense to connect 200 sites when you have 40 or 50 field techs at a time. They're not going to be at all those sites. So that's a waste of money, it's a waste of infrastructure. And in reality, you can't run pipe or run fiber, or run broadband to all those sites. They're not even feasible to, to be able to do that from a... Uh, you know, logistical perspective. So what do they do? How do they fix that problem as well? Um, there's a lot of issues related to being able to use modern uh, solutions and be able to run an efficient, you know, company going the next decade that you didn't have to worry about 20 years ago uh, to be able to compete. Mark, am I missing anything here? Uh, no, you've pretty much covered it. Really, the only thing I want to uh, touch on is uh you know, even outside of the pandemic on the, the education front, and I know any teachers that are on uh, will be uh, nodding their heads, but, you know, six, I believe it's six to eight percent of school age children don't have access to uh, high speed broadband at all. Right. They're still on dial up. So even even outside of, you know, any issues that, uh, 
of, that COVID has, has brought to the education. You know, this is still something that was there before, right? This is something that, that needs solved, you know, like these kids need to do their homework just like everybody else. And when, you know, in a world where everyone has Chromebooks and, you know, that's how they're doing their work, right? Like where's the solution for these people? So um, yeah, that's, that's all I, I would want to add to that. And, you know, we're, we're really rooting for the Greendale example, right? Being able to help the, their, their students and rooting for the pump it up example for them to be able to connect in the field appropriately. Uh, another example might be, you know, that's not even on the screen would be a, you know, a small business or even the, you know, the enterprise discovery example where you've got some people going in and out of the office, similar to the Greendale school where they're maybe flexing. Uh, some employees are in, some employees are out some days, or maybe it's, you know, you have half your employees in the office all the time. And now you got half of them, they're remote all the time. Now they've kind of just established that work from home uh, structure. And, and how do you support that? You still have new locations, whether they're flexible or they're not flexible uh, in, the, in the switching in and out. But how do you support that infrastructure? You, you still have security risks. You have, for example, a uh, maybe it's a finance uh, you know person on your team, right? That works from home now. They can do their work uh, from their home office. But that sensitive company, company information that is now on a employee's computer, but that's on their home network, not protected by an enterprise grade security solution, way easier for somebody to hack into that home network and access the information uh, from that employee's computer that's super sensitive to your business, right? Or maybe it's an IT person who's doing some work from home as well. Uh, easy to hack into that home network, get into that. And now they have access to maybe more of the network uh, from the IT uh, management perspective. So there's some security risks and vulnerabilities that haven't really been solved in, in this example for a smaller or, or enterprise level business that's also doing that home or work from anywhere approach. And they haven't really figured out the answer to that um, beyond just the reliable connectivity, beyond just the IT team being able to support and manage and help troubleshoot, uh, you know, connections or, or issues on the computer without uh, having to also figure out and navigate a system that they don't control. Kevin probably is nodding. Uh, Kevin, are you are you uh, in alignment with that? Are you seeing that? Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm in total agreement with all that for sure. All right, so let's let's keep moving. How do we fix their problems? You know, what's the easy solution to working uh, remotely and having that that new uh, business model solution? So here are some really simple ones, right? Greendale really could use a private cellular network. What does that look like? What is a private cellular network? At a really simple, simple level, you're taking wireless technology that you would use to connect your phone uh, to a public cellular network like T-Mobile's or Verizon's or AT&T's or U.S. Cellular's, except for it's a closed environment that is managed and, and owned essentially by Greendale in this example. So they set that up. They have a, a footprint on their campus and maybe a little bit beyond their campus uh, of this network that can cover that entire campus. Uh, now they've fixed all their connectivity issues, right? They don't have to worry about reliable connectivity for their students in or out of class. Uh, by the way, they can have class outside and not lose connectivity. That teacher can go do a uh, video presentation for their in-person class or uh, their remote class from anywhere on campus now. Um, pretty cool. It scales, you know, pretty easily. And, and depending on how you build that system, it can be super cost effective compared to what you would have done, uh, had to do before. Uh, so you got coverage outdoor, you got coverage everywhere, uh, you got expanded connectivity, you got reliable connectivity. It's inherently secure because it's a closed private cellular network. Uh, and all you have to do is really set it up and issue SIM cards to all the teachers and students that are coming to enroll in and teach at your school. Uh, and they've essentially got a great way for their IT team to be able to support a manageable, completely owned, completely private system uh, as well. Kevin, that probably sounds like a dream. Uh, for you, if you were the IT director at a uh, at Greendale in this example. Uh, yeah, full control of everything. Absolutely. Just call me the master. There we go. Uh, so, you know, that's a really simple solution for, I mean, private cellular numbers can be complex, but the idea of what they need is very simple. And that helps them to do business uh, in that new normal uh, and cutting the cord. So they don't have those infrastructure issues. Uh, as well. So uh, pump it up. Oil, right? They need some pop-up network kits, right? Let's say they have those 50 field techs roaming around. Well, uh, if you're not familiar with the pop-up network kit, consider it an all-in-one Wi-Fi box, right? It connects wirelessly. It has a battery built in. You can work on it all day long. You push the button, you turn it on, you have Wi-Fi wherever you are. So you can connect your laptop, connect your cell phone, 
to it. Uh, you can connect uh, devices if you're measuring and you need to collect data and, and uh, log it in a, a machine somewhere or send it off to HQ. Uh, it's pretty neat how it works and that's flexible. So we talked earlier about how Pump It Up really needed that flexible solution so that on their 200 sites, they're not paying for internet connectivity uh, 24 seven at 200 sites when they're only using it for maybe eight to 12 hours a day at 50 sites at a time. So this gives them the option uh, that goes with, uh, it's basically a, you know, a ruggedized briefcase, goes with each of their techs into the field to be able to solve that, uh, that problem of connectivity. Now they can access all those reports, all those work orders, be able to send notes back to the database, be able to pull up information on troubleshooting something that maybe they needed to fix or figure out. They didn't know right offhand or they need to access a company or repository or database of information to be able to solve that and do their job. They can do it more efficiently, more productively, and it really just solves their issue. And the cool thing is, is let's say there's a, a bigger project at one of their rigs. They need to send a few uh, few folks out there that the kit supports up to 10 users. So you can have multiple people or multiple devices working off that same kit at the same time. Um, <clears throat> and uh, another one of the cool things is you, know, you have the alert systems and notifications, and all of these solutions have a mobile device, a cloud device management software that kind of backbones it. So your IT team can manage remotely all of the, the connectivity, all the devices that are there on the network uh, as well. Kevin's gonna dig into that in just a minute and some of the features of some of those cloud management tools. But uh, it's pretty pretty cool to see how new business models can be adapted uh, to both the pandemic or to new needs in the field and how that the new technology and the new solutions can really help solve those problems really simply, to be honest. Um, you know, not on the screen, we talked about some of maybe the, the small business or the enterprise business uh, being able to support those secure connections from home from that finance uh, person. Right. And we have a work from anywhere kit that can be popped up, set up right in that, that home office. Uh, and now they have that secure network that the IT team can remote into, uh, make sure they're connected reliably, make sure they're secure and be able to troubleshoot and support them like that. So there's a lot of solutions that we can really come up with and that we have out of the box where we can customize uh, that these uh, organizations can really take advantage of and really be able to do business better more remotely uh, in that new cut the cord mentality. Um, Mark, what else we got there? What am yeah, I I mean, you touched on a lot of it. I mean, you know, I've got I've got one more point for each of these two examples, but really, I mean, it's applicable to every single industry. And the way that um, the way that it's implemented, it, you can do it so many different ways, right? Like, uh, I don't know. It's, that's why this uh, webinar in particular is just so exciting to me. I just, it's really, really interesting to dig in, you know, uh, to get, well, we'll hear some actual, um, you know, these these are both imaginary, but we, we'll hear from some uh, actual real life companies that uh, Sam has worked with here in a little while. And, uh, you know, I'm excited to hear about the uh, the cloud device management from Kevin. But, um, yeah, I mean, so speaking to, uh, to education, you know, uh, if you're talking about uh, setting up a Wi-Fi system, right, we talked about the cost effectiveness. So for each access point of Wi-Fi, um, a private cellular network is going to give you two to three times the amount of coverage for, you know, just, just per access point, right? So really scaling it, uh, especially if you're doing something large scale, it really starts to save up. Uh, when you start start getting it real big, um, and then as far as the uh, the pop up network kit for the uh, the pump it up oil company, I mean, really you you nailed it on the head when you just said it at the push of a button, right? I mean, if you're if you've got a job, you don't you don't want to be spending so much time, you know, just um, trying to to fiddle around with your electronics, get everything set up, get everything you know managed. I mean, you get there, you push a button, and you're you're online. You know, it's it's really that simple. It really is. And uh, I'm going to pass the baton over to Kevin, our technical guru today. He's going to demo a little bit of some of the uh, really useful cloud management tools for all these solutions, really, uh, that can be incorporated into uh, into them and that will allow your IT team and your organization to be able to manage some of this remotely and way easier uh, than maybe you are today or maybe these examples are today. So Kevin, I'm gonna pass the, the baton over to you. You're gonna share a little bit about helping to make remote work work with some of these examples and uh, tools that you have access to. Absolutely. Well, hello everybody. My name is Kevin Flores. I'm the tier two support engineer 
Um, just kind of like Ben mentioned, um, I'm going to be going over the benefits of a cloud management software. And I mean, the main function for it, two simple words, is going to be remote management, which encompasses a lot of different things. Um, I mean, main benefits are things that you've already kind of, you know, heard over the course of the webinar. You're looking at, you know, cost effectiveness. You're looking at scalability. You're looking at efficiency. And you're looking at organizational benefits. And I'm going to go ahead and share my screen here. So that way I can show you, uh, I'm going to show you the NetCloud Manager. This is just one of the many cloud management softwares that are out there. Oh, he's pulling that up. If you're wondering why Ben's looking so beautiful, we were just over at Baton Rouge Beauty for their grand opening today. Right. Thanks, Mark. You're a sweetheart. You got it, buddy. <laughs> And can we see my my NetCloud manager right now? Yep, yep, we're good. All right, perfect. So one of the first things we're going to be going over is uh, groups. So uh, this groups help you basically organize your devices. It helps you do bulk configurations. Um, they can also help you with bulk firmware updates. So with a group, for example, I uh, just come over here. And one of the awesome benefits to this is just depending on what your use case is. So say, for example, you want to separate a, set, a certain set of devices for maybe fleet one of your transportation industry. You can go in, you create a group, you name it, you know, whatever you want to do. So you can name it fleet one. Apparently, I don't know where the backspace button is. There we go. Uh, you can name it fleet one. You pick out your product and the NCOS version that you're currently trying to run on. Um, once your group is created, it's really simple from there because uh, what you can do is you select your group, you do configuration, edit, and you can enter pretty much any configuration that you need to do um, that you can do on the local UI of the device. You can do right here. So you want to change your internal IP. You want to set up your Wi-Fi. You want to set up web content filtering, port forwarding. You want to do failover. I mean, just whatever you can think of, right? I mean, imagination is the limit here. And basically, the reason that this basically fits the, the benefits that we would have just talked about, scalability, you know, cost effectiveness, efficiency, all that, is because what I can do is I configure just the group. So that way, whether you're buying one device, 100 devices, 1,000 devices, all you have to do is take these devices, move it into the group that you just made and configured, and they will all configure themselves nice and easy. So it's one. So it, it, it's a one-time work case, and then everything else is going to take care of itself. So you can see right there where that's going to save you a lot of time. Because, I mean, if anyone who's actually done a configuration before, if they've gone in to do it 100 times, you know how incredibly time-consuming that's going to be. Um, Again, you know, you have the organizational benefits or like the firmware updates. So like, say, for example, I want to go and I want to update my firmware. So, you know, say this one was set on 7.2.70. I go in, I pick my new firmware version. I set it. I let it run. As long as the devices are online, they're all going to update on their own. I don't have to go into each device individually and do that, too. So, again, you're looking at scalability, cost effectiveness, efficiency for all that jazz. Um, from here, we're going into the fact that it lets you be both proactive and reactive, which is an awesome difference. All right, so firmware updates are going to be a big part of being proactive. You know, I can tell you from a lot of the from a lot of customers and things that I work with, um, a lot of the issues stem from just not being able to manage a device. So you know, they they can't maybe the device is in a location where they can't get to. I actually had a ticket pretty recently. Um, it was a COVID facility. This was going to be during like the height of the pandemic, essentially, um, where they could not access this particular facility for any reason. The device was online. They had to work with it. They didn't even realize they had the NetCloud Manager. So I was able to go in, make all the changes they needed to that device, which was a mission critical thing for them to do. And they were able to do it within, well, I was able to do it within five, 10 minutes, you know, saving them tons of money without having to figure out how are we going to get someone in like a hazmat suit to go to this location, right? So lots of benefits there for sure. Um, you know, and then as far as proactivity, you know, you if you want to do health checks, if you want to do like firmware updates is a big is a big part of being proactive. Um, you know, you can set up alerts as well for most cloud management softwares. That is a proactive step in order for you to have a better reactive response. So if you get an email saying, hey, your device went down or, hey, your device is rebooting or you had a failover event that lets you make sure that you have a plan in place to to respond to these events. Um, you know, if you want to check little things like cellular health, you know, you can go into um, you can go into your cloud management software, you pick a device. 
and you just check the stats for it. I mean, and health checks are always going to be a good thing to see. Make sure that the location is going to be a good thing, especially for like a pop-up network kit. You know, the idea for these is that they're mobile. All you have to do is you can take it anywhere you want, you push a button, and you let it run. But, you know, what if you're having some cellular connectivity issues? You know, you know, you, if you're trying to diagnose what's causing it, you know, this is a good place to go. You go to health, you go to cellular health and you can check what's your RSRP, which which measures the power of your cell, of your cellular signal. You can check the RSRQ. This measures the quality of your cellular signal. Um, the SINAR, which measures the level of interference. So, you know, maybe you're in like a steel building and it's your cellular signal is just really poor. This is a good way to indicate, you know, what's causing that. So, you know, maybe you need to look at, you know, some kind of external antenna or just moving the device in a different location where it's going to get a better, you know, better reception. You know, you want to check your RSSI. This checks the cellular health for uh, the that region in particular. This is more of a baseline, so you can't really do anything to adjust this one, but this will tell you, hey, you know, if you have no interference or anything going on, like this particular graph, you can expect a relatively good cellular signal for this particular region. So these are all really good ways for you to be proactive in how you're going to manage the device. You know, but say, for example, something's already happened. Now it's time to get reactive. OK, what do we do? You know, this is a great way to be able to run diagnostics. You know, most tools, whether it's Cradle Point, Peplink, or whoever vendor you prefer to go with, they're going to have tools on here. You can run a ping test. Is it communicating with the internet? You can run a trace route so that if something's not connected to the internet, you can figure out where it's dropping off. Is it at the gateway? Is it at the website? Is, you know, you know which hop is, you know, is going wrong? Um, you can run a speed test, you know, maybe your speed is really, you know, is really bad. And that that's going to be a good indicator of why things aren't connecting or why things aren't functioning properly. And that's, you know, that'll be a good indicator. Okay, my speed's terrible. How's my cellular health look? And that kind of gives you ideas of how to pivot when you're trying to do any kind of diagnostic, any kind of troubleshooting, you know, and things of that, um, uh, and things of that nature. Now, you know, say you've already diagnosed the issue. Now you need to implement fixes. Okay, how do we do that? We can do that from right here. You know, say the, say, for example, you've done all your diagnostics. You realize, oh, you know, I have an IP conflict. Okay, cool. I go to configuration, edit. And I can do this on whether it's an individual device or if I need to do this at the group level. I can do it at the group level like I showed you a little earlier. I go in, I can come into my networking tab, local networks, my local IP network, and then now I can go in and I can start, you know, making, uh, applying all the fixes that I need. You know, maybe the fix that I need for this case is just a firmware update or whatever the case may be. So, I mean, these are just really awesome ways for you to be able to jump in and so that you can do things just, you know, remote management. You know, you can be proactive, you can be reactive, you can do all these things to make sure that you're gearing your business for continuity, for scalability, for cost effectiveness, for efficiency. And these are all things that as, as much as I say them a bunch of times, they are that important in order for you to grow your business and make sure that you are being consistent with everything that you're doing. Um, but these are going to be your basic highlights of, of cloud management software. Um, like I said, I mean, every, you know, every one of them is going to be a little bit different. A, a metaphor that I like to use whenever I'm explaining this to customers in general um, is that, you know, when you're looking at one cloud software versus another, you know, you're looking at, you know, this net cloud manager, which, you know, you're seeing on the screen versus Peplinks, say, in Control 2. The a lot of these softwares, they have very similar functionality. And basically, you're looking at differences between like Walmart and Target. They basically do the same thing, but they might specialize in something and the aisles are going to be different places. So, you know, once you kind of get a feel for where things are, it makes it a lot easier for you to kind of run where you need to do, get what you need to get. And that way you can, you know, come in and out the door so that you can stay effective. Uh, but these are all very, very important for how to manage a network, because, I mean, in, in today's day and age, as as being remote becomes more and more important, you have to be able to do things remotely. If you're sending someone on site for every little thing is going to cost a lot of money. And I you know I've worked for previous companies where, you know, they something happens to a device, they send a technician to the site. You know, by the time the technician gets there, maybe it resolved itself temporarily. Technician doesn't know what to do, so he goes home. And then as soon as he leaves, something happens again, and then we're right back to rinse and repeat. And this is such a, a waste of, of, of like time and efficiency for how to do things. So, I mean, right here we have cloud management software to be able to do all that. That's fantastic, Kevin. And yeah, uh, thank you for touching on that last point again. Um, really, uh, I think I think that's just, yeah. Do, uh, do the majority of remote solutions have some kind of uh, cloud device management? I know you mentioned Cradlepoint and Peplink. Um, I mean, 
I know a lot of our solutions uh, utilize those, but that's that's not everything. So I'm just curious, uh, is that something that you can expect to find in, in pretty much uh, any remote solution that you go with? Um, I would say yes. Now, I mean, to be fair, I, I don't know every single vendor that's going to be out there, and I'm sure there's some that may not have this resource yet. But as far as most major players that you're going to find, then yes, absolutely. You're going to have a cloud management software because, like I said, as especially with the pandemic and things that occurred, it shows the necessity for remote work and remote management. So everybody who doesn't already have it is already gearing towards that. So, And the people who do have it, they were just ahead of the game. But yes, uh, to answer the question, most, most vendors are going to have a solution like this for you to do all the things that you need to be doing. Awesome. Well, thank you. Um, I think we're going to use this to, uh, to transfer into uh, Sam's segment here. Uh, he's going to talk about what you can do today. Uh, he's going to give us some uh, examples from real companies. And then we're going to talk about enabling instant connectivity. So uh, Sam, if you're ready, take it away. Thank you very much, Mark. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Sam Miller, and I am the Regional Account Manager of the Southeast for our Public Sector Department here at RCN Technologies. Today, I'm just going to go over a little bit of info and background on some customers that are currently utilizing this solution today, right now, as we speak. And I'm going to explain how it supports their current uh, their current needs for connectivity, where the where, the what, the why, and the how. So since, since Kevin and Ben have gone over somewhat, pretty much all of the bases for this awesome pop-up network kit solution and our working from home solutions and uh, pretty, mu pretty much all the solutions to those current problems that we're looking at today. So today, starting, I'm gonna talk about Monroe County Schools. That is a county here located in Tennessee more so in the middle part of our state, where during the COVID-19 crisis in 2020, at the very beginning of the year when it first started to hit and people started to take away and school started to cancel and work from home and figure out what a virtual school environment looked like, this customer found a, a very prioritized need to implement some secure connectivity in a lot of different areas, uh, ge geographical areas and locations that they could utilize a network to provide for a multitude of students that didn't have network connectivity at home strong enough to maintain or the capacity for online learning. So this was a huge project that we were able to work on successfully with Monroe County Schools and their IT staff and their leadership teams to implement a solution that fixed the problem. And the problem was the fact that they didn't have the bandwidth or the capacity within their county to provide that connectivity for the students that still needed to learn, that still needed to maintain you know, their grade point averages, maintain their, uh, their lessons that were now being displayed online throughout the entire school system at this county. So the project included utilizing uh, our pop-up network kit. The IT staff at Monroe County thought that it was an incredible uh, leg up in this situation to be able to manage their network from their team's houses, from their homes that they worked at out of to maintain the network, the security for the students, the security for the teachers to ensure that the data and the bandwidth was all being utilized and prioritized to ensure that the students at their homes or at the locations that they had gathered safely at to, uh, to utilize this net, these networks in different locations to these, this IT, IT staff made sure that they were secure, they were set up correctly, that nothing could get into the student's network and interrupt their online class with their teachers. And so this application was awesome because one, it was a success. Two, it fit every, every socket, every facet of need that the county had for a successful deployment of network across, across the county for the students that didn't have the, the connectivity that would suffice for them to continue to go to school. So all in all, I have somewhat of a statistic after this past school year ended in 2020 and the beginning of the, of the uh, 
2020-2021 school year, which was fall of last year, uh, every single student in that county that did not have the correct means of, of wireline connectivity, every single student that needed this solution was able to move on to the next grade and pass all of their classes correctly. So I think that's a pretty awesome report to look back and see that this solution, not only was it able to provide a secure network for a temporary, you know, a temporary pop-up situation or anything like that, uh, it did its job, of course, but the students reap the benefits of this pop-up network connectivity that, you know, wasn't in the foresight from the beginning yet that uh, that we didn't see at first, like, wow, they're going to use this for just a semester and then summer and then everybody will come back to school. No, they used it for a full school year. And all of these students were able to pass their classes. There was no service or connectivity interruptions throughout. Every, every line of connectivity was secure. And the IT staff had eyes on it at all times, every hour of the day that these networks were being utilized. So I think that's a pretty awesome report and, and a success, I would say, for this solution being utilized in Monroe County. And Sam, another cool thing that I like about this story is that, let's say post COVID, they don't need the kits for that specific application. You know, they got so many things they could use it for, from special events to sporting events to putting it on buses when they're traveling to let the students do homework on the bus. You know, you probably have a couple other examples that they could use it for post COVID. Yes, that, that's that's absolutely correct, Ben. These and the plan was, of course, to implement this until further notice, right? Until students could go back to school, of course. But we kept at the forefront of this project not the knowledge that it was going to be utilized. These solutions were going to be utilized. These pop-up kits were going to be utilized in other applications once students could go back to school and utilize the facilities in person. And they're using them on buses right now. Students are going on 45 to an hour and a half minute bus rides just to be picked up from, from school and taken home. And they're still able, able to connect to the, the secure network and do some homework on the way home and for athletic buses to do uh, to do high school football trips uh, that travel that teams have to travel to other schools to play at. They make them do homework on the way if they have to, or they utilize it to video call into other coaches that can't be on site or at the at that current game, whatever that looks like. And so they're still using them today. So moving on to our next um, case study that we have today, it's a but more of a larger scale. And this, this application called for a large scale of uh, a very unique work from home experience for their employees. Mitchell EMC is an electric utilities company in, in Georgia. And they have quite the wide variety of employees that not only do they did they go from working in a large facility and partially working out of their vehicles to continuously go to different meters throughout their entire region to uh, to ensure that all of their their efficiency and metering was up to date continuously every day. They would also work in an office for a certain amount of hours a day and then work in their trucks, their technician trucks and their service vehicles also throughout the, the rest of their day. And so what that looked like for them after this, uh, this pandemic had hit and their, their uh, usual working hours spent in the office were no more. So their IT staff came in contact with us and we started to break ground on the project on what it would look like to implement a solution, what the solution would look like to be implemented into their employees' uh, facade or their employees' repertoires to stay connected to their core network via VPN, virtual private network, as well as the uh, the management piece was a huge, a huge benefit for this, for this IT team on the project management standpoint. So that their employees, the main objective was to, to maintain a, a private secure network for every employee that utilizes a technical vehicle and works from home. So they had zero employees working in their main headquarters located in Georgia for the last 365 days since last March. And so they needed something other than a cell phone hotspot or a small hotspot that, that it wasn't to the standards of the security that they needed for their connectivity needs. They needed something with more beef and they needed something with more security. So 
we found that the right solution was going to be a pop-up network kit that their technicians and inner office staff and back office staff could utilize at their homes. The technicians could use it in their trucks to connect to their uh, their mobile data terminals that they would use to read meters throughout their region. Uh, customer, uh, they would visit customers every single day and utilize this network that we provided them that they managed and they maintained security on and everything worked to its full efficiency. And we heard that there was an increase of productivity and an increase in workplace efficiency, meaning their vehicle, because they worked out of their vehicles more since they didn't have an office to go to. The employees that worked out of their homes maintained you know, their status quo, of course, as expected for a business like this. And they were able to continuously stay online without any service interruptions and without any security, any security threats or anything like that. So this this use case that they got that they utilized this for this product uh, was was a full success for them. And I think it's awesome because they're still utilizing them today, and they're going to continue to implement them more into their fleet of technicians uh, into the future to the future months and years uh, with this pop up network kit. As it advances, they're going to continue to rip and replace old ones and new ones throughout these years and utilize it in their trucks to keep that secure network up and their efficiency up. And our last case study for today is uh, a friend in the Department of Defense, the United States Navy. I myself am a uh, United States Marine veteran and served under the department, uh, as under the Department of the Navy, the Marine Corps. And we were able to help a, uh, a branch within the Navy uh, known as the, um, it is the, uh, the, the Naval Training Command uh, Northeast at a, a Naval Training Facility that needed a certain amount of connectivity, right? They needed a secure network that they could utilize for multiple applications at this training facility. They needed a network to take out into the field to utilize for training applications with certain technologies that required a network connection that was secure and easily manageable and monitored from a distance and or on site. And they also utilized it for, uh, for multiple classrooms that were in remote locations for sailors and Marines that were utilizing um, a, this secure network and needed to utilize a secure network to, to operate a, in an efficient, an efficient frame that required that security level and for classified information to be, uh, to be maintained in compliance. So in the Northeast at an undisclosed location, the United States Navy has utilized a handful of our pop-up network kits to provide to sailors in training and Marines in training for certain specialties and skills they provided a secure network to operate under and with to maintain and utilize for all of their working, all of their, their classrooms if, if needed, if it, was a, uh, if it was a remote classroom and multiple sailors, either comfortable, comfortability or, uh, or standards where they could use it to tap into the classroom. They could use it to uh, have a group in a small um, a small meeting place that multiple sailors and Marines would utilize to connect to this, uh, to this network and still maintain the, the, the simple security standards that are needed for any sort of, of DOD network to, to have eyes on or for your eyes only or classified or unclassified um, information that they needed to use for their classroom, their studies, their coursework, whatever that looked like for them. We're not in on that, but they are and it helped provide exactly what they needed and they're still utilizing it today and will in the future continue to utilize more. And so I think this is a pretty awesome use case for them because it's rugged, it's durable, it's, it looks cool. And they made all those points when they were looking and reviewing at the product that we provided for, for this use case. So today that includes our use case, case studies, um, Walk through, and I'm going to touch a little bit on the uh, the instant connectivity for that pop-up network kit, just so you guys can understand the uh, the parameters and uh, really the guns that this brings to the fight. So, of course, it's an LTE connection. 
an LTE and 5G capable connection that is over the air at a high capacity to provide a high capacity network wherever it goes. This antenna that's provided inside of this kit uh, has about a 300 foot broadcast range that varies, of course, depending upon environmental factors and variables, but it's within that range of plus or minus 50 outside of 300 feet, which is huge. In this kit internally, there is a uh, custom tailored battery a, that can last up to about 10 hours, give or take two, depending upon the network pool and the bandwidth um, and the utilization of the router that is inside. Uh, this battery is awesome because sometimes if, if used intermittently, you can get more usage out of it. Um, uh, depending upon how many times you need it on, how often you, you can turn it off, and, and so on and so say. So up to 10 users supported. This is kind of a gray area because the device that is implanted in this, in this case, uh, it can support up to 10 users full capacity. Each of these users, say on a laptop, like all of us on this, on this webinar right now, all there's, you know, there, however many of us that there are, it could support up to about 10 of us, maybe a few more, maybe a few less, depending upon uh, the, the pool of the need of the of the, the network. Uh, but with that video stream, continuous feed, the continuous live uh, 1080p or 4K video being streamed, that's about a realistic number. That makes sense. You overshoot it. You could lower expectations or raise expectations and not meet, or if you undershoot it, you know, the opposite. So let's talk about the physicality of this device. It's a beast. Look at it. It's a rugged, it's a light case. This thing can be tossed off the top of a 16 foot helicopter, hit the ground and still be on and utilized. And I'll tell you that from experience because we have tested it up to a certain specific height on drop testing and it has not even it took a hit, let's say that. So with this device, this, this kit taking a hit like that multiple times in a row. So it is rugged, it's lightweight, it only weighs a few pounds. It can be carried like a normal briefcase containing a laptop and some papers with some pins. This thing is incredibly portable and incredibly easy to get around. Now, like I touched on the antenna, we have in the bullet point, so I'll go in order. Touched on at the beginning, but this antenna that's inside contains leads that connect to a very specific uh, router. So these leads are, are two LTE leads. What does that mean? Well, the two LTE no, no nodules or modules, so to say, inside of that enca encasement or encasing of the of the actual antenna body. Those leads are those antennas. Those those LTE leads are what pull in the cellular bands that are over the air, just like your cell phone would. So your cell phone has an LTE lead inside of it, right? And that LTE lead pulls the specific bands to the carrier to which your cell phone is certified on, and that SIM card goes to. So this antenna case, this antenna casing inside the antenna itself has two LTE nodes that pull LTE every band it can into that antenna. And so what it does is whatever network that is that device is connected to, whatever SIM card is inputted into this, into this device, pulls those specific bands via this antenna. So now the other uh, three pieces. We might, we might want to go ahead and skip that last one. I, I didn't even realize how close we were getting to the hour. Um, but uh, yeah, if you, if you just want to hit that real quick um, oh, and then we'll yeah. move on to the next part. Yeah, thank you. Absolutely. Thanks, Mark. So the antenna also has two Wi-Fi nodes to display wi wireless internet uh, throughout uh, that 300 feet broadcast that we touched on at the beginning. And then one last lead is the GPS, so it can be tracked from remote areas and visualized on a remote pane, pane one single pane of glass by whoever uh, is monitoring this, these devices. Now that's all that I got uh, for our pop-up network kit. Uh, Mark, thank you for letting me know about our time. I wanted to be respectful of everybody's time who's joined us today. So thank you very much and have a good day. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Sam.